In this tutorial, we're going to be making a calendar to add to our lesson plans. So I want to make column A skinny to use as a border. And I'm going to just move down a little bit and start writing in my days. Whatever day you start with, it doesn't really matter. But once you get the first couple of days written, you can select the little square on that box and then just drag and it will fill in the rest of the days for you. It makes it super easy. So I want to select these boxes so that I can merge them together and this is where I'm going to upload a cute image for my month. Now I made this image on Canva and I will show you whenever I go to make the second image but as you can see it's not quite filling up how much I want it to so I'm going to resize this cell until I get it almost right. Now I want a row up at the top to have as that buffer for my border after I hide all of my lines. And so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and merge some of these rows together for my days of the week. And so what you're going to want to do is select about four or five of those cells and then click the merge icon up at the top of the screen. And once you have one done, again, you can click on that little square at the bottom right and drag, and it will do that for the rest of those also. So now I'm going to select this whole row and drag it for however many days I want, and it really saves you a lot of time. So I got a lot more than what I wanted, but you know, whatever. <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and populate my days. I want to uh, get my font fixed to where I want it to be. I want the numbers to be on the left side and I want them to be up at the top like a regular calendar. And I want a cute font. And so I'm going to go ahead and change that so that way I don't have to worry about changing it later. I'm going to go ahead and populate um, the first couple of dates for each row and I want to do that drag and autofill but you can see if you only do one number then it autofills that that same number which is not what we want and so you have to select the two days and then drag and it will autofill that for you and so again this is just going to save you a lot of time especially if you're setting up one calendar for each month Now that I have all of my days done, I'm going to go ahead and make this next column skinny. Again, we're going to use that as our border. And so it doesn't have to be very wide at all. And I'm just looking over everything. And I need to make, I want to make a row at the bottom of that calendar skinny for the border also. And that's um, just so that I can have the calendar by itself. So now that I have this done, there are a couple of other things that I could do. So in the lesson planner that I have on Teachers Pay Teachers, I have a tab for each month. But one thing that you can do is you can put more than one calendar on the same tab. So if you like seeing everything all at once, let's say three or four months all at once, you can have that. You just add more than one calendar to this exact same sheet. And so what I'm doing here is I want these colors to match that August picture. And whenever I go to add a color, it asks for a hex code. And I don't know what those colors are in that picture specifically. And so if you go to imagecolorpicker.com, it will actually allow you to upload your image. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to upload my image by clicking that button. Selecting my picture, my August picture, and 
it actually picks out all of the colors that are in this photo and it gives me that hex code. So if I just copy that code, I can go back to Google Sheets and I can paste that in this hex code space and it will make it that color. And so now I can do this with various colors from this August image and it will make all of the colors for my tabs for my days of the week, it will make them match. And so aesthetically, that's gonna be a lot more appealing to me um, whenever I look at these calendars. So now that all of those colors are done, I want to go ahead and add the borders. And so I'm going to click the border icon and give it a border all the way around. I want it to have a thicker icon, a thicker color. And so I'm going to select um, the second border thickness. And then I'm just going to select all of those blocks that I want to have the border. And I'm going to give them that border. So now I have it looking how I want. Um, you may or may not want the text for the days of the week to be white, uh, depending on if the, the dark colors are a little bit harder for you to read, but you can change that to white if you want. So now I'm gonna make another picture for September. And this is one of the fonts I like. You have to be careful on Canva because some of the fonts um, are premium fonts and they will try to charge you if you use it when you go to download it and so make sure that you're getting a free font and this is actually something I have to tell my kids all the time whenever we use Canva and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the border around the calendar and I'm going to paste it I'm not going to paste it there I'm going to paste it in the I column and I'm going to click on the cell with the picture and I'm going to insert the picture again except this time I'm going to choose the September picture now when it saved it to my computer it still had it saved as August but in Google Chrome you can just click and drag it into that spot and it will upload it that way and then all I have to do now is change the dates on the calendar and once you get the one and the two, you know, the first couple of numbers, you can select those and then click and drag again to populate all of those other fields. So if you don't want all of your calendars on the same tab, then you definitely um, can just create new tabs and instead of pasting this calendar right beside the August calendar, you'll just paste it on that new tab. Delete the rest of those days from August since you don't need those there. And then it leaves you with another row at the bottom. You can delete that if you want. Now these two days at the beginning, they are part of August, so I'm going to gray those out so that way I know that I'm not actually using those. So one thing that you can do, if you do put all of your calendars at the same, on the same page, instead of having a table of contents the way that we do earlier, you could actually make these calendars your table of contents. And so it could be like a pacing guide and your table of contents all in one. So that's an option also because whenever you click on this link, it's still going to take you to this week's uh, lesson plans. And so really you have multiple ways to set these up depending on what your preferences are.